मत सुमन अधिकारी आदेश काफल इन्फोसिशन सेवेन अकोलरशिप इन्फोसिशन चिप फो फो में तब सब स्वागत करना चाहूँ अज आज जी इस इस इन्फोसिशन में हम फुल ब्राइड स्कोलरशिप रेस में तेस का कसरी हो प्रोसेस कस्त हो भाई कुरा के बारे में हम अब छलफल करने वेबिनार अब ते अगर बढ़ा अब धे फर्मल तरीका जाए हम अब लगभग लगभग इनफर्मल जो तरीका हो आज हमीस स्पीकर स्पीकर हो रक्षा महर्जन वहाँ चाह वहाँ जी वहाँ जी सीनियर प्रोग्राम अफिशर हो फुल ब्राइट कमीशन ने असैगरी अल अब फुल ब्राइट कमीशन ने अब धेरेवटा स्कलरशिप प्रोग्राम तस्तु यूसिफ ने फुल ब्राइट कमीशन कमीशन नेपाली के लिए धेरेवटा स्कलरशिप प्रोग्राम धेरेवटा स्कलरशिप अपर्चुनिटी प्रोवाइड कर अल सब एस्पेक्ट वहाँ ओवर लुक कर वहाँ ले वहाँ ची एमएससी इन इकोनॉमिक्स एमएससी इकोन इन इंटरनेशनल एक्सचेंज एमएससी इकोन इकोन करने वाला है इंटरनेशनल एक्सचेंज इसको लेके फ्रॉम एवरेज विथ यूनिवर्सिटी वेल्स वाला करने वाला है अन्य सी सी वाज आल्सो अन नॉर्वेजन एजेंसी फॉर एक्सचेंज कॉर्पोरेशन इन म्यांमार रक्षे में हम इस आ हो अब यह प्रोग्राम अब अगड़ी बढ़ऊँ अभी एक दुवटा कुछ जस्तु कि कसरी अगड़ी बढ़ा भाई कुछ में तब अब आप जिज्ञासा चैट में चैट में टिपोर्ट करते हैं है चैट में आपू चैट में टिपोर्ट टिप टिप्ते अच्छी हम एड्रेस करने सकते एड्रेस करने कोशिश कर बिचा बिचा में अब कस कस अब म्यूट म्यूट कर दिन अंद प्रोग्राम भैर बेला लास्ट में अब कसले आप बोले प्रोग्राम कोई सो मन तो हम दिने इसको अब यह प्रोग्राम चाहिए अब सब कस सब फुली एसेस कर नपा होना सकूँ है तेका हम रेकर्डेड भर्जन चाहिए यूट्यूब में राखने तो लिंक हम प्रोवाइड करने काफल को अब काफल में ये ये काफल बड़े हम ये ये इवेंटर अर्गनाइज कर साथ सहयोग को अपेक्षा रखते यो प्रोग्राम अगड़ी बढ़ा रक्ष मैम हजर नहीं अगड़ी बढ़ा आइज आइज सुरू भो So thank you, Sumanji and the Kafal team for inviting me to conduct this information session. I'm really thankful to your team uh, for letting me come today to talk about the Fulbright program and the different scholarships that we provide. I'm really happy to see all of you here today. I want to start off with a short video, so I'll just do my screen share. Uh, could you see that? Yes, ma'am. Okay.
Okay, so I just wanted to kickstart with this um, kickstart this program today with this video to showcase full writers who at one point were like many of you looking for a higher education or exchange opportunity. So as Sumanji said, hi everyone, I'm Rakta, I'm the Senior Program Officer at uh, the Nepal Fulbright Commission. I oversee all Fulbright programs for Nepali and American grantees, as well as institutions. And I am your point of contact for information about Fulbright programs, and I will work closely with you if you become a Fulbrighter. So welcome to this information session um, for today. The session will cover the following. I will give a short background on what USF Nepal, the Fulbright Commission is. I will also talk about our Education USA Advising Center. And then I will uh, delve into the Fulbright program, the administration, the programs that are available for Nepali students, such as the Global UGRAD program, the Opportunity Funds program, and of course the Master's program. I will also detail application processes and then leave you with my uh, contact details and the commission's um, details. So there will be some time at the end for some questions and queries, but if not, you will be able to connect with us um, through the contact details that I will share later. So starting off, just a short background on the United States Educational Foundation in Nepal. So the Commission for Education Exchange between the United States and Nepal, which is also called the Fulbright Commission or USEF Nepal, was established in 1961. And the Commission administers educational exchange activities between Nepal and the United States through more than 15 programs like the Fulbright Foreign Student Program, there's the Hubbard Humphrey Program, and many more. So this is our building. Um, our office, we're located in Maharaj Ganj. We moved there in January 2020. Historically, um, the use of Nepal and Fulbright Commission was located in Budari Sarak. So the use of Nepal office also houses the Educational Advising Center, which is EAC for short. It is a global network of over 430 international student advising centers providing accurate, current and comprehensive information on higher educational opportunities in the USA. So they provide a lot of student advising support with their weekly sessions. They also assist you one to one. We have student advisors um, in this department. So apart from the scholarships that the Fulbright Commission provides, the EAC department will help you just in general with admissions to colleges and also to access scholarships. At the same time, the Commission's in-house Prometric Testing Center is an established and leading testing services provider, <clears throat> delivering technology-enabled tests and providing the highest level of customer service. So this Prometric Testing Center operates a global network of 8,000 test centers, including the one located in our office. And test takers annually are 7 million in numbers um, and their most recognized licensing and certification organizations, academic institutions, and government agencies. Now onto the Fulbright program. So the Fulbright program is the world's largest and most diversified education exchange program between the US and other nations. It was established um, by the United States Congress in 1946 to promote mutual understanding between the people of the US and other countries. So the legislation was sponsored by Senator J. William Fulbright of Arkansas shortly after the World War II. So he had a proposal for the US Congress which was simple but remarkable. He requested to use proceeds from the sales of Cyprus war property to fund the promotion of international good through the exchange of students in the fields of education, culture, and science. So although refined and expanded by um, subsequent laws and um, changes, the program's basic objective remains um, the same 
which is to promote mutual understanding between the people of the United States and those of other countries. So Fulbright, <clears throat> Senator Fulbright and the Fulbright program is motivated by the belief that through education exchange, people would get to know and better understand citizens and cultures of other countries. So the program facilitates exactly that, the collaboration with universities, schools, binational Fulbright programs, um, government agencies, non-governmental organizations, students, scholars, teachers, and many more. Um, so that they are able to achieve higher and make full use of their potential and become outstanding representatives of their societies. So as you may know, and as you could see in the video, um, the Fulbright program has produced several generations of leaders throughout the world in the sciences, the arts, education, literature, business, media, and the government. Um, there are renowned artists, university presidents, editors, CEOs, um, Nobel Prize winners, and countless number of professors and teachers in all fields. So past recipients have included Nelson Mandela, Jimmy Carter, Maya Angelou, um, Ian Rankin, Sylvia Plath. Um, you might know Muhammad Yunus as well, who initiated the Grameen Bank, and Philip Glass, who is a composer and um, also most recent uh, Pulitzer Prize winner in international reporting, Mega Raj Gopalan. And um, prominent Nepali full writers uh, you may know would be Joint Secretary Sushil Wamsal, Editor-in-Chief at Setopati, Omid Thakal, um, Kunda Dixit, who is the uh, editor at Nepali Times. You may also know Dr. Sangeeta Mishra of Porupakar Majority and Women's Hospital. Um, former finance minister Deepak Giwali, former ministers of foreign affairs Prakash Chandra Lohani and Prakash Arun Mahat. There's also Dr. Anjana Singh, who's a scientist at Nepal Academy of Science Tech, and there's so many more. So as I've said, um, annually there's over 4,000 foreign Fulbright grantees from 160 different countries who go to the US uh, in 50 different states for their exchange program. On to administration. So the primary source of funding for the Fulbright program comes from the US Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, ECA for short. Um, they do that through an annual appropriation by the US Congress. So the grants are awarded through open merit-based competition to outstanding individuals who are leaders or potential leaders in their fields. So ECA participates in the design and direction of the program activities, makes the final selection of grantees, approves final host institutions after a thorough consultation with um, the other partner organizations, provides final approval of all student placements, advises and consults on participant emergencies and overall program participation, provides liaison with the public affairs section at the US Embassy and also with the Fulbright Commission. And then there's the Fulbright Commission, which publicizes program application openings. And we also conduct outreach like this to recruit students from around Nepal. We hold information sessions and we advise applicants one-to-one. -one. We also review applications and then conduct interviews. We select um, and nominate candidates, but ECA is the one that makes the final selections. We also conduct orientations to those selected candidates, so they are prepared um, for their departure and their program in the US. So the Fulbright program supports graduate study and postdoctoral research in the US for Nepali <clears throat> students, scholars, and teachers, as well as institutional capacity building here in Nepal through placement of specialists and teaching assistants. Like I've said, um, apart from the master's program, the global UGRA program, we do a variety of different other programs as well. The program also funds American students and professors to do research or lecture at universities in Nepal. Nearly 800 Nepali and Americans have participated in the Fulbright program since its inception. 
and about 110 Nepali Fulbright grantees have worked with or are working under the Nepal government's uh, public service commissions or educational institutions. Um, I wanted to talk about the grantee selection criteria that applies to all Fulbright programs, though there are specific um, program specific requirements as well. Uh, I highly suggest that before you apply to any of uh, the Fulbright programs, you make sure that you review the eligibility criteria carefully for each program and check whether you are, you are eligible or not. So when you are certain that you're eligible, then you can start making the necessary preparations for your application. So the Fulbright grant is awarded not only for your academic or professional excellence, but also for your leadership potential. So while each grantee has a specific study project to pursue, it is important to recognize that the ultimate goal as a Fulbrighter is to promote um, mutual understanding and respect between the US and Nepal. So Fulbrighters are cultural ambassadors in the US and are active and involved members of their communities upon returning home. So grantees are selected on the basis of their academic excellence, professional qualifications and potential in a wide range of disciplines and specializations. And the binational members of the Nepal Commission Selection Review Committee selects grantees <clears throat> through a stringent selection procedure. Um, sometimes it takes almost over a year and it involves several stages of screening, evaluation, interviews and counseling. <clears throat> so in an effort to engage with um, candidates from non-elite populations, rural areas, minority groups and others who may be excellent candidates but are lacking the necessary language skills. There is English language training uh, which is available for nominees um, with um, lower English proficiency or lower TOEFL scores. And we also seek and encourage the involvement of people from traditionally underrepresented audiences throughout our grant programs that we manage and through all activities and in our workforce and our workplace as well. So opportunities are open to people regardless of their sex, age, religion, location, socioeconomic status, disability, orientation, sexual orientation, or gender identity. So we are committed to fairness, equality, and inclusion. So these are specific to the Fulbright program applications. A TOEFL score is not required at the time of the application. However, it is required for participation in the program. And these are routine questions that we usually get as well. So that's why I've sort of highlighted it here. Attested documents are mandatory for um, application to a Fulbright program. References should also be submitted by the deadline that is um, stated. And there is a plagiarism policy that every one of you should follow because any application that is plagiarized will be removed for cons from consideration from the program. Preference is usually given to someone who has had little or no experience in the US or outside of Nepal. And the application packet um, requires specific documents, the recommendations, and it requires that the application is complete as well. So incomplete applications are not accepted. I wanted to touch on the J-1 visa requirement because participants who go through to the US through the Fulbright program go, through, go to the US with the J-1 visa. So you should not already be in possession or in the process of obtaining a US immigrant visa, which is usually called the green card. So as I said, Fulbright participants, they receive the J-1 visa under which there are certain criterias. So you must return to your home country, Nepal, for two years immediately after completion of the academic program before you are eligible to apply for any other immigrant visa to the US. So a marriage to a US citizen or a birth of a child in the US, it does not exempt participants from the two-year home country physical presence residence requirement. And 
visa extensions or transfers for other academic study, employment, um, perhaps practical training or any other activity will be granted under the J-1 visa. And there will be differences with regards to program specific J-1 um, employment um, criteria which I will touch on as I talk about individual programs. Yes, okay. Yeah. okay, so on to the global UGAD program. So the global undergraduate exchange program, which is called global UGAD in short, is for emerging student leaders from underrepresented sectors around the world. The UGAD participants engage in undergraduate non-degree studies at a diverse network of accredited institutions. Participants also engage in local community service projects and take part in cultural enrichment activities. So this program brings future leaders to the US for one semester. And this is a non-degree program to experience the US educational system, share um, your Nepali culture and explore the US culture in return during the exchange. So the participants leave the US with the tools to become leaders in their professions and communities. And the Global UGAD alumni go on to receive Fulbright grants, obtain prestigious international internships and work in business and government uh, when they return back home. Nepal selects two grantees per year for this particular program. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the administration side because there is another partner organization involved, which is World Learning. So the Global UGRAD program is sponsored by the US Department of State with funding provided by the US government, but it is administered by World Learning Worldwide. And in Nepal, it's administered by the Fulbright Commission. So since 2008, World Learning has administered this program and only institutions approved by World Learning and ECA can host participants. Each participant will be assigned a placement at an institution in the United States according to his, her abilities, interest, English language ability, and field of study. So participants cannot choose their U.S. host institution or change placements once assigned to a host institution. So placement information is rarely available at the time of the scholarship notification, but it is provided to participants before they depart to the United States. And courses will be selected in consultation with the academic advisor and has to be approved by World Learning. So there are certain requirements as well while you're in the UGRAD program, which is a 2.0 GPA. And you will also need to inform world learning, report to world learning on a timely basis. So the timeline of the program is the application opens around January every year and closes around February. Around April, the commission um, calls successful candidates for interviews and then we nominate candidates to world learning. And in May, the nomin by May, the selected nom nominees, they select the TOEFL scores. And by June, World Learning does final selections. And by August, September, their program starts. So the final two grantees will depart to the US for their program. So the bottom picture you can see is sort of the, um, announcement that uh, we make for the Global UGRAP program. Quickly on to eligibility criteria. You have to be over 18 years, but below 25 years before the pro program application. You should be a citizen of Nepal and you should be studying in Nepal. And you should currently be enrolled in full-time undergraduate programs. But you have to make sure that upon your return, you will have at least one more semester to study in your institution. So you should demonstrate excellent educational qualifications, but also leadership potential. 
like I have mentioned, a TOEFL score is not required at the time of application, but we will um, make you sit for one if you are selected for the program. You should be able to begin your studies in the US in the fall semester of in the following year, and you should be eligible to receive and maintain the US student exchange visa. In eligibility, if you are a US citizen and permanent residence of the US, you are not eligible. If you are working, studying abroad, not in Nepal, then you are not eligible. And if you have already completed your undergraduate degree prior to the program start, unfortunately, you will not be eligible. There's also the age criteria here. On to program benefits. You will, of course, receive J-1 visa support by the commission. You will receive air tickets, health benefits through insurance coverage, tuition and managing university fees, which also includes books and supplies. You will have housing and meals, usually um, on campus or sometimes with a host family. You'll also get a settling in allow allowance along with a monthly maintenance allowance and any other allowances applicable. So the UGRAD program has a big community service aspect um, and students must complete 20 hours of community service in their academic semester and you also must submit a comprehensive plan describing your activities and you are encouraged to find off-campus service opportunities during your time in the US. On to the application process. Applicants, the application site, uh, which is hosted by World Learning, uh, it usually works better in Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox than in Internet Explorer. And each student must do a first time registration to use the online application. Um, and there are obviously certain requirements. Each section has certain requirements that um, you will need to fill up. Another requirement is that you submit two essays um, the subject is leadership, community service, challenges, and conflict resolution. You will also need to submit two recommendations. One is an academic letter of recommendation, and the other is a personal letter of recommendation. So it can be um, your employer or a professor who is familiar with your work, but one definitely has to be an academic recommendation. There is a format for these recommendation letters, which will be available when the application is open. No other format is accepted. You will also need to submit your passport or your citizenship and official transcripts, which need to be attested and a CV as well. For more information, you can visit the World Learning website and there is the Global UGRAD pages on um, social media, Facebook, Instagram as well that you can check out. So I'm quickly moving on to our Opportunity Funds program, which is not the Fulbright Department's scholarship program, but actually our Education Advising Centers um, program. So this particular um, scholarship opportunity is for students from disadvantaged backgrounds who have excellent academic records and high chances of being awarded full funding from US colleges and universities, but they lack finances. So this particular program funds upfront costs. Um, so the upfront costs can include TOEFL and SAT, ACT registration fees, college and university application fees, postage courier fees for dispatching college and university applications, US student visa fees, um, travel to a testing center or the US embassy for students who live outside of Kathmandu as well. And on top of that, you will also be receiving special guidance and advice from the college app on the college application process, selection, scholarship search, etc. from our student advisors. So this is not the type of scholarship like the Fulbright one where the cost associated with attending is covered, but it is for the upfront costs associated with applying to the US colleges. 
So you will have to show a demonstrated financial need as well as outstanding academic records, which is 3.6 or higher on um, SLC SCE in Nepal, which is I think um, before 2016 would be 80%. And you should have completed class 11 and currently enrolled in class 12 with scheduled completion by the summer of the program announcement, or you could have completed class 12 as well. More details of this you can find on our website. You can also interact with our student advisors at Yusuf Nepal, or email our student advisor in this email address here. So I just wanted to touch a little bit on this particular um, program, which is another excellent program, which is not covered by the, which is not administered by the Fulbright program, but by Yusuf Nepal. Now on to the Fulbright master's program. So this program is also sponsored by ECA, but it is administered by the Institute of International Education and managed by the Fulbright Commission in Nepal. It was started in 1966 and to date, over 300 students have gone to the US for master's education. The program usually starts in the fall of um, the coming year. So for example, if a program is announced in 2021, you will be attending if you are selected to the study program in 2022. The program supports all expenses for a two-year master's degree at, the, at any US university in any field except medicine and nursing. And another exciting opportunity with this study program is that you will have a post-degree academic training or teaching assistantship or optional practical training opportunity as well after your study program. This program application opens usually around February to April and around June, we make our selections and call successful grantees, uh, successful candidates, sorry, for interviews and we nominate to ECA. In total, we select five grantees. On to a little bit about administration because it is IIE who administers um, this particular program and we collaborate with them. Um, it is a US cooperating agency, which is independent and non-profit and has been active since 1919. And apart from Fulbright, it also manages 250 different programs in many, many countries. And it sponsors various, the sponsors of the IAE programs are not just, it's not just the US government, but other foreign governments and private foundations and companies as well. Its headquarters is in NYC and we work closely with them for this particular program. On to general requirements for the master's program, you obviously have to be a Nepali citizen and you need to possess a four years bachelor's degree. Or if your bachelor's degree is less than four, you will need to have a master's degree. So students who only have um, a three year bachelor's degree and have only completed a first year of a two year master's program, you are not eligible. You will need to have a two years master's degree if your bachelor's degree is only three years. So the, these are general requirements for, um, they're very specific to education. So you need to demonstrate that in aggregate, which is in total, uh, if you're in the non-technical fields, which is humanities and social sciences, you should have 54% or above. If you are in science and technology fields, then you will have to have 62% or above. The minimum requirements for students under the semester system are 65% if non-technical and 75% if technical. And the cumulative GPA should be 3.5. So if the grading system is different, for example, your bachelor's has a semester system and then your master's has a GPA system, then that is fine. You can just submit it as it is. 
English skills requirements, like I've already mentioned, you do not need to sit for your TOEFL or your GRE tests when you're applying, but it will be mandatory if you are selected for university applications. If you already have a TOEFL um, and it should, it will only be valid if it was taken in the past two years of uh, application submission deadline. Same with GRE, but that will be five years of application submission deadline. Some universities do accept IELTS um, scores, but not all. For the master's program, we require work experience. So for men, it is three years of work experience and for women, it's two years, which is a post bachelor's degree, full time professional work experience in an area directly relevant to your chosen field of study. And this experience must be outlined by your professional recommender. Even if you have worked in several organizations, it is fine. And full time paid internships are eligible. Voluntary unpaid internships are not uh, considered. On to ineligibility. If you already hold a master's degree, then you are not eligible. Um, sorry, if you already hold a master's degree in the US, then uh, we will not be considering such grantees. If you have previously resided in the US for six months or more, and if you are in the process of obtaining US citizenship or US permanent resident status, and if you are applying for a degree in medicine and nursing, we will not be considering your application. Onto the benefits of the master's scholarship program. So, of course, your tuition, living stipend, health insurance, travel, academic allowances will be covered. But on top of that, you will also have the opportunity to experience life in the US and share your culture with Americans. You will have pre academic training and enrichment seminars. You will be inducted into the global Fulbright alumni network and you can earn a graduate degree as well as a post-study experience in the field of your choice. So onto the application process. This is also an online application, which is hosted by IIE. Um, I've just put down some pointers for you to remember. So when you're applying and completing your application, you should not miss out on the sections that are asterisk. So those are mandatory sections. And um, I would also suggest that it's important for you to enter an alternate email if you have one. Post-secondary means undergraduate and graduate. Reverse chronological order means recent first. So these are certain American um, statements um, that confuse applicants. And at the same time, you need to take care to answer all questions to the best of your ability. You need to obviously um, spell your name correctly. You should not use any diacritical markings. And you should make sure that you have added into the online application text boxes displays completely. You should list all your schools attended, study programs abroad if you have done so, all your academic, professional and personal awards and honors. And you should also identify no less than four institutions that you would want to study in as your preference. You should also review the plagiarism agreement and acknowledge that you understand and will comply with the agreement. I will touch a bit more on the plagiarism um, perspective in a bit. So we require that you submit two specific essays for the master's program. One is the study or research objective. So many candidates are eliminated because of weak essays. So your essays must include excellent content, but also be well-structured effectively organized, properly punctuated, and smoothly written. You need to write a clearly articulated study object or academic goal statement. This is very important and it's an important component of the application and it is your opportunity to state what you want to study and to achieve as well. So you need to be pretty specific. And then the second essay is a personal statement. So this clearly details who you are your, and your experiences. 
You can highlight your strengths and address any inconsistencies or perceived weaknesses that you may have. You should not be afraid to do so. And each essay should not be any longer than two pages. It's not about how long it is, but it's about the quality of the essay. So we should remember that longer is not necessarily better. On to documents required. You will need to submit a CV format for which will be on the website when the program application opens. You'll have to submit a citizenship or passport scan. You need to submit attested, I repeat, attested copies of your diploma, certificates, mark sheets, transcripts from SLC upwards. TOEFL IELTS GRE, like I said, is not mandatory, but if you have it and it is valid, you should submit it. S2 essays are mandatory. And then the application, the online application portal also asks for a writing sample. Usually it is required for study in the humanities or social sciences like journalism, literature, etc. And it also asks for a work sample if perhaps your um, study program is related to the arts, so you can submit your portfolio as well. For this particular program, you need to submit three recommendations. With the reverse recommendations, you need to provide the name and email address of three people to provide a recommendation on your behalf and the online application system will send them an email directly. And they will ask, the email will ask them to register to the site and complete the recommendations. So this process will happen as soon as you enter the contact information and save your application. So you do not need to submit the application for your recommenders to be notified and you will be able to check the status of your recommendations on your application. So on the site, you can of course contact your recommender and request them to submit the, uh, the recommendations on time, but their submission will all be online. So you have to be mindful about who you invite as a recommender. You need to choose someone who can comment in detail on your professional abilities. So you should invite someone who can comment you on your strengths and also your leadership quality. You should um, select referees who perhaps can say different things about you because there are three different recommendations that we require. So we would like to see different things said about you. In some educational systems, like in Nepal, most of the time, the reputation of the referee, the recommender is important, but in the US, this is not considered. Um, that high. So if the referee does not know you very well, then that might be an issue. So it's the, about the quality of the referee, not about the reputation of the referee. Okay. So on to the program timeline. Um, the Fulbright program, the master's program timeline is really interesting because the IIE placement process is um, distinct and it has four different stages. So in the first stage, you will be submitting your application and your documents. In the second stage, if you are selected, um, you will be working with IIE with regards to your placement institutions. And then IIE is the organization that will submit your applications on your behalf to those four institutions in the US. And then with the final placement phase, IIE will manage the information sharing, the funding, everything, and will prepare the documentations for visa sponsorship as well on your behalf. So I just wanted to highlight the selection timeline for this year. Um, so for this year, the application deadline has already passed. It, it was April 30th, and we are going to be holding um, interviews in July, the first week of July. So by August, we will be I am notifying the grantees who have been successful. And between September and December, they will apply to universities in the US and their final placements will be confirmed around March, April next year, and their program will start in the fall of 2022. 
Um, I'm going to quickly touch on plagiarism because I understand I'm running out of time a little bit. Um, so any plagiarism detected in any part of your application will result in, in immediate ineligibility. So please only present work that is your own. And if you present work that is not your own, please be sure to follow correct protocols for citations. Even universities utilize specialized uh, programs to detect plagiarism. So you really need to be careful um, about the um, academic honesty that is taken very seriously in the US. So these questions might help you. Did I complete the work myself? And if you've relied on another scholar's work, have you quoted them correctly? And when you are presenting research findings, are you presenting them accurately or not? So finally, you can connect with the Fulbright Commission. Um, we are available uh, on call from 2 to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday. You can call us and query us about any specific program or application process that you may have. You can also email us at fullbycom at fullbrightnepal.org.np. You can interact with us at messenger at fullbright.nepal on Facebook. Um, the program is also, we also have an official presence on many social media networks. So you can connect with us on Facebook. You can also visit the US Embassy's website and the alumni.state.gov website also has quite a lot of information about um, different types of scholarships apart from Fulbright, um, other scholarships as well. So despite COVID, um, the Fulbright Commission activities in preparation for future cycles, including recruitment and selection will continue as best as possible with careful assessment of local conditions. We are teleworking at the moment, but we are available via phone call and email as well to answer any of your questions. Finally, um, Fulbright turned 75 this year. So throughout 2021, we will be celebrating the program's history of positive impact on the lives of individuals and on global and local communities. So throughout this year, the program will highlight the impressive accomplishments and legacy of um, the diverse pool of alumni that the Fulbright program has, both in the US and in Nepal as well. So you can um, check out our Facebook page and our website as well for events, and you can join to learn more about our program and about the achievements of our alumni members. Thank you very much for joining me today for this session, and I believe I will be taking um some questions uh, thank you very much saksi ma'am alili ek dui jana ko chai euta tyo yo powerpoint lai chai presentation lai chai share garna milthe ki milena bhanera sodhirako huncha tesa lai chai ke cha yeah of course uh, i can how would you want that sumanji yeah file cha file upload gari dinu huncha ani pachi malai malai share gardinu hola haina tyo email mai ani ma tyo एड्रेस Let me just stop sharing. Okay, so what about masters and above level program in nursing? Um, nursing and medicine are the two. Program uh, fields, subject fields that we do not cover because um, there are, we think that there are other um, scholarship opportunities for that particular field. Without experience, can't we apply for master's scholarship? Unfortunately, not. This professional experience is a criteria um, that we require for the particular program. What about geology for the master's level? Yes, that's fine. 
Can you share the PowerPoint? Yes, I will. What about masters in public health? That is a very popular uh, field of study that um, applicants apply for. When is the opening date for this program? If you're talking about the Global UGA program, it usually opens in January. And for the master's program, it usually opens um, March, April. This year, it was delayed a little bit because of COVID. Um, hopefully next year, it will not happen. So it would usually open around end of March, early April. Can you please highlight the work requirement of experience as eligibility for master's program? Yes. So it's three years for men and two years for females, and this is post bachelors. So we look at it from say, the time that you received your bachelor's transcripts to today, to the day of your application. And as I've said, um, it should be full-time paid um, experience, no voluntary work, no unpaid internship. What about fellowship programs? I am, you can check our website for um, fellowship programs. We have a postdoc program, and then we also have the Humphrey Fellowship Program, which is the Mid-Career Professional Exchange Program. Is there an age limit for masters? No, there isn't. We don't have an age limit for the masters or any of our other programs apart from Global UGRAD. Are there any scholarships for doctorate? Unfortunately, the Fulbright program does not provide any PhD scholarships. Can we apply masters in public health? Yes, like I said, it's very popular. What about MBA program? Do we need GMAT or GRE? Usually GRE is um, required, but that depends very much on the institutions. Same with the um, requirement of scores. There are specific requirements for specific institutions. What are the minimum criteria? Um, if you're talking about education, um, there are specific requirements for the education qualifications, and then there's obviously the work experience as well. What about masters in physical therapy? We can apply for that. Civil servants working in Nepal government, for them, is there any courses? Um, we have quite a few civil servants applying each year for all of our programs. Um, and we usually have one to two um, Nepal government employees as well um, who become full by grantees every year. Um, am I eligible <clears throat> for my second master's degree? Yeah, definitely. What about master's scholarship in MSc? Yeah. That's fine. Students who apply for masters that are related to social work, what are the majors offered in the Fulbright program? The majors are not offered by the Fulbright program. It is offered by the universities that you apply to. So you'll have to do a little bit of homework with regards to that when you're applying for the Fulbright program. So it can go from a master's in scholarship uh, sorry, a master's in social work to a master's in say rural development, um, development studies. It could be on project management, I believe as well. There are different um, parts and breakout uh, fields under the um, umbrella of social work as well. What if we are currently working and do not have working experience certificate to submit during application process? So we do not require a specific uh, work experience certificate to be submitted. What we require is that you submit a CV that highlights your work experience and your recommender, at least one of your recommender will have to be your current employer who can attest and vouch for your specific um, position and the number of years that you've worked. Can we work in the US after the masters? 
working in the US after the master's is actually not um, advised or allowed by the J-1 visa requirements. Like I said, there is the PTAT, OPT, teaching assistantship trainings, options, which are actually even better than uh, working in the US because you will be getting a professional experience, which is related to your field of study um, for up to a year, I believe. Um, in the U.S. after your study program, and these are usually paid as well. So it's as good as a work um, experience. Can we make three recommendations from same working um, organization? Ideally, no. Ideally, we would request you to um, submit a variety of recommenders. Um, one should be your academic professor, perhaps your teacher. Um, and the second one could be your um, boss at your current organization or your previous organization. If you are submitting recommendations from the same organization, then it should be different people. Um, different people who know you for different types of work. Say perhaps one knows you as a manager and the other could perhaps be a HR officer. Masters in biomedical engineering, yes, you definitely can. This is a very popular subject nowadays, I think. We're getting quite a lot of applications um, for biomedical engineering. What about master's scholarship in engineering? That is the most popular uh, for Fulbright programs, the most popular um, field of study in the US. In psychology, yes, definitely. Can we apply with average grade or they require good academic scores? We obviously require good academic scores because the Fulbright program is a prestigious program um, and we, the commission also vouches for the students that we send out to the US and we want you to do well in your studies and you have to be in good academic standing while you're there so that you can um, fulfill the J1 requirements as well. And if you want to go to a good university, you will obviously have to have good scores. PhD, unfortunately, Fulbright program does not provide PhD scholarships. Is there age limit? No. What about masters in agriculture? Yes. Nepalese, um, they usually aim for a agriculture scholarship in the US. Is academic recommendation compulsory or can we submit all three professional recommendations? It's fine to submit professional recommendations. We understand that um, some of you may have um, fulfilled your academic uh, requirements quite a few years ago and you may not have a connection or contact with your professors, which is completely fine. So then your professional recommendations will do. What about masters in economics? Yes. And an MBA, definitely. Can we apply for masters in dental program? Yes, you may, I believe. I believe you can for dental program. Okay, so I think, okay, I have one last question, I think. If previously not selected, does that affect the selection? Now, not at all. We actually advise grantees to reapply again. Um, we ask that you go through your application again, revise your essays and reapply again. Please do not lose hope. We have a couple of grantees who have actually applied two, three times and have been successful. So you should definitely reapply. Can we apply with first division if that means um, it fulfills the specific education qualifications, then definitely you can apply. Okay, so I think that's about it for um, all the questions. It's 4 p.m. Um, uh, I really. Ranjan Kandel, okay, Ranjanji. Ranjanji. Rajan Rajan Mm -hmm. I think that the master's school is a 
academic year to lapse by three years gap by security apply on me to build in a that's fine um do you lapse by a probably come body down back as well as your other yeah so that's fine okay thank you what about engineering masters or bachelors does gap affect gaps do not actually affect um obviously if there is a gap where you have not been doing anything say you are not studying in any particular study program uh, research or professional um, employment then we might sort of highlight that and ask for clarifications as to why you did why you are not doing anything or why you are not engaged in something um but that does not necessarily mean that um you will be ousted from the application process we will try to clarify with you but um gaps are no one ago i think it's so bad week so i begin so when you go about life man so that's fine lao lao question are being it ne bhayo jasto cha haina thank you rakshana ma dher dher dhanyawad ara फेसबुक इसलिए सब एसेस कर हमी इसको रेकर्डेड भर्जन यूट्यूब में भी हाल तेस में तब काफल कर काफल भर सर्च कर यूट्यूब में अरुण भाई भाग अगड़ी भाई प्रिविस्ली वेबिनार को भिडियो एसेस कर सकूँ है फिडबैक दिने दीदे करूँगा काफलस जोड़ी दिए रहने वाला सब धन्यवाद दिन चाहूँ हो